Hi there, I just wanted to make a quick video trying to demystify some of the uh, terms that get used when we're talking about vocal range. Uh, I've had a lot of people asking me, um, you know, what it all means, particularly when they're trying to uh, fill in profiles for Spotlight or for Mandy, and you want to be able to say what your vocal range is. And it is sometimes quite important because if you're applying for a musical or something, uh, they want to be able to tell immediately whether you've got uh, the right range for the songs uh, for the role that you would need to fulfill. So uh, the way it's most commonly done is uh, in letters and numbers. Uh, so a, a common uh, sort of soprano range, for example, would be um, a kind of C4, which is middle C, up to A5. So let me just explain what that looks like. Um, a piano is a kind of essential tool here. If you can get access to a piano, then that makes things a lot easier. Uh, so there is no simpler way of explaining what middle C is other than the fact that it is in fact the C approximately in the middle of a piano. So middle C is here. And um, you, you kind of work out it's called C4 just because it is. It's not a perfect system because, you know, you can go lower than C A1 or, you know, whatever. But um, that's C4. Let's just accept that for now. So then it, you, if you if we start A4, you'd get A4, B4, C4, D4, E4, F4, G4. And then when we get to G, we're going to start again with A5, A5, B5, C5, and so on. Uh, and uh, that's, that's pretty much how that works. So if you're trying to describe a vocal range, which is middle C up to, let's say, soprano range A5, that's how that would work out. A4 to A5, that'd be a two octave vocal range. Octaves being eight notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, so uh, another way people might notate it is is using uh, the kind of the sheet music. So here's an old piece of music by George Butterworth, and it says here, uh, well, it's this one actually, but compass. That's just another word for range, and the compass is A to D. And it has uh, an indication of that up here, uh, compass being A to there we go, A to D. Um, it's a available in two different ranges, but you can see the key here matches the key here. This is the one A to D. So that would be the same as saying A4 to D5. Um, so that's what those terms mean, generally speaking. Uh, what I'll do now is just sort of describe uh, some of the different voice parts. Um, if you are, well, let's let's go with the basics. So soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. Um, those are the kind of the basic voice parts that you'll have to to deal with. If you are a soprano, then you're dealing with a kind of range that goes from. Uh, this is all very approximate, but middle C to A5, as discussed. That one, I'm not gonna try and do that. Mezzo-soprano, um, well, no, no, we'll worry about that just now. Alto, um, if you have a low female voice, generally speaking, then that would be the alto range. And the alto range is quite a lot lower. And this one up to uh, approximately a top G, uh, ideally. Uh, but uh, maybe you'd get away with just an E. That one. Up to. So if you can sing those notes, you are probably an alto. Um, then you're into male voices. So changed male voices. So a, a, a boy whose voice is broken. Um, changed. Tenor would be... Uh, the C below middle C, C3, uh, or rather up until a top G ideally, uh, and then if you're Pavarotti you need to be able to go right up to these notes as well, uh, but don't worry about that too much, a top G should suffice. Now it's all a bit different in musical theatre and stuff because you're expected to be able to belt like really high um, notes and, and what have you, but 
nonetheless, that's that's the official wisdom, C to G. Um, bass, you need to be able to get down to a top, uh, bottom F ideally, or even a bottom E. And if you're Russian, these notes will also be needed. And uh, up to an E. So right from there, two octaves. There's obviously voices in the middle of these as well. Um, the easiest way to think about it is that these kind of sit in the middle. So you've got soprano, you get mezzo soprano, which is just one notch below that. So that might be going a little bit lower and being able to um, being able to sing it a little bit lower and not having to go as high. Um, you also get baritone, which is in the middle of bass and tenor, um, which again is sort of in the middle of the two. But um, just very briefly, there's a little bit more to it than simply the range. It's the timbre as well, um, the, the kind of vocal tone. So um, tenor and bass, or tenor and baritone is the easiest way to describe that, for example. You might actually have a baritone that has a very wide range, maybe enough range uh, to cover the bass notes and the tenor notes. But they would be a baritone based on their kind of vocal quality. So I'm a tenor, so... I need to be able to ping out these high notes with a kind of tenorial uh, tone. That's what makes me a tenor. Whereas if I was a baritone, that might sound a bit more like this. Or, or, or whatever, because it's a different kind of thing. And I might, I might need to have a bit more dig in the lower notes. So you like right now, I can sing those notes. But that's not very useful. I can't really do much with that. Whereas you need a bass. Uh, to be able to actually make a good thing of them. So that, that's what we call tessitura. You've got your range, you've got notes you can actually sing, but then you've got the notes that you can actually sing comfortably in, and, and those are important as well. Um, that's a lot of information. Uh, just very briefly, uh, another one of the questions, I can't deal with them all in this video, but I'll do others. Uh, how do you choose music based on range? Well, the simplest thing, as I say, describing that is if they state what the range is. Uh, so if it says the compass or it gives you a little indication, then you, you can work it out uh, from that. Otherwise, you just have to look through uh, the music, if you have the sheet music, um, and uh, just see how high it goes. So you should see, kind of, if you scan through that music, that it doesn't go higher than the D. That's the, the, the D going high there. Um, and it doesn't go lower than the A. Uh, but realistically, nowadays most people are just going to be working off chords and things, so you just have to kind of listen to the recording, I guess, and um, a recording uh, in the key that you will be singing it, and just make sure it doesn't go above. But nine times out of ten, you know, you'll have you need, you need a vocal tutor or something that can help you with that, and they'll be able to tell you immediately uh, what the range of a piece is. Um, but it's not just about whether you can sing the notes; it's also about where your voice sits. That's the important thing. Uh, so, for example, although I could sing this particular piece in this key, come my own one, come my fond one, come, it's not very, it's not a very good idea for me because I'm a, I'm a tenor, so I need to be singing in this key. Come my own one, come my fond one, come my dearest unto me. And then it sounds better because it's in my comfortable range, not just a range that I can actually sing. Uh, there's also uh, considerations with the tone of your voice. So uh, some people have quite a dark tone. When we talk about dark, we're talking about ah oh, that sort of sound. Some people have quite a bright tone. We're talking about ah ah, oh, and ah is kind of a description of dark and bright. Um, so some songs might work really well uh, for you, and some might not generalization massive generalization but like a nice slow ballad something like um uh i'm gonna get copyrighted don't i if i sing anything but uh, let's just imagine a nice slow ballad that kind of goes if you've got a nice rich tone something like that's going to really suit your voice very well uh, if you've got a much brighter tone, something which is faster and more energetic might fit, fit your voice very well. You know, that sort of thing. 
Um, so you really need a vocal tutor to kind of help you on that, but don't immediately assume that just because something doesn't work for you immediately that it's not going to work at all. Um, there was one other important thing I wanted to say, but I can't quite remember what it was. Um, yes, when you're finding a range, just be careful. So if we're talking about uh, young artists, uh, who most of the people who ask this question, uh, and you're trying to find a range and you say, uh, all right, love, can you sing this note? Oh. And okay, so that's, that's you've got that C and then, oh, can you sing me this note? The, the chances are they're not just going to be able to sing it immediately, okay? So you need to sort of work up an idea. This is why ideally it'd be tested by a vocal tutor rather than just somebody singing at home. But give them a run-up. An octave and a ninth works well, so... And then go up a key. So on and then and then you can get a better representation of what notes they're actually able to sing and this is okay this is really important but well, it's not really important it's just my own personal bugbear if you're testing boys um there are so many boys out there that think that they can't sing uh, just because they have been uh, wrongly tested so if you say to a boy can you sing this note well let's say this note here <laughs> now i'm talking an unbroken voice so a boy with an unbroken voice you ask them to sing that <laughs> the trouble is they probably, well, there's a good chance that they won't identify uh, as, you know, they're identifying as a, as a man, not a boy. So they want to sing, ah, uh, not, ah, uh, but their tessitura, their comfortable range is here. So what often happens is the following. A teacher will sit them down and say, right, you want to be in the school choir? Let's sing this. Uh, and the boy will go, because he's trying to pitch this, but he's trying to do it in this voice. So again, you really need to help them with that. Just start nice and low. Start as low as lower than they can go. So start with this one. And then by the time they get up to that note, they will have got into gear and they will have found their voice. But don't, for goodness sake, don't assume that just because you hit one note on the piano and they can't sing it, that they can't pitch. Uh, that is very rarely the case. Uh, good, that's my, uh, that's my rant over. Uh, hope that was helpful. Uh, do leave your comments in the description. No. Leave your comments in the comments section and I will leave in the description um, just uh, the ranges. Uh, and do let me know in the comments section if there are other things that you'd like me to uh, explore. And uh, particularly uh, with your young artists, if there's questions that keep coming up, um, and we can do more of this. Thanks very much.